Athena landed on the moon, but she's in trouble. The Athena lander from Intuitive Machines settled on the surface of the moon, the startup said. However, the landing it didn't go perfectly. Mission managers don't know Athena's exact position and everything indicates that the lander settled in the wrong posture. Yesterday, March 6, Intuitive Machines tried the moon landing, which ended in a partial failure. Company officials say Athena landed somewhere nearby the pole of the south moon, but they don't know exactly where. It is not to the end clear what happened, but it looks like the lander, as in the case of the first mission of Intuitive Machines, he may not have kept the division. Intuitive Machines Chief Stephen Altimus admits to a press conference after landing that Athena had settled in an incorrect posture. During the first attempt to land on the Silver Globe last year, which it was considered a success, the Odysseus lander settled on the moon, but also not he has reached the correct position. He flew too fast and during landing he damaged one of his legs, which caused him to tilt to the side. This caused numerous problems, but the mission has accomplished some of the intended works. Altimus also announced that the company is working on getting images from the cameras on the lander and determine what is damaged and what works. The lander seems to have power and the mission controllers were able to get in touch with scientific instruments on board Athena. Depending on the property locations, Athena may still be able to make some of its own the planned work. To have enough power to continue, it must have at least one solar panel oriented to catch rays at sunny. Due to a bad attitude, the main goal of the mission, i.e. the search water ice may not be reached. Athena moves 10 instruments scientific, some of which were designed specifically for exploration traces of water ice and other resources near the south pole of the moon. The lander has two vehicles in his bowels. The first is a miniature rover called MAP, Mobile Autonomous Prospecting Platform, which was built by company Lunar Outpost from Colorado. The second is the Jump Grace developed by Intuitive Machines whose task was to explore the region around landing sites using a series of jumps. Among the scientific instruments mounted on the lander there are, among others, Trident, Regolith Ice Drill for exploring new terrain, and M Solo, Mass Spectrometer Observing Lunar Operations. The first is Advanced Drill whose task was to extract samples from under surface, from depth to 1 meter. The second is a Mass Spectrometer which he was to analyze the extracted samples for compounds such as water and dioxide the coal. However, if the position of the lander is not vertical, then the drill it may not work as expected. The success of other components, including vehicles also depend on Athena's position. Athena flew into space on February 26. With her on board the Philippine 9 rocket was a NASA orbiter lunar trailblazer, which was supposed to scan the surface of the moon also in search of traces of water ice. But on March 4 NASA says communication problems prevented the probe from entering planned orbit around our natural satellite. If the mission controllers they will restore the communication, perhaps they will be able to put it in another orbit, which it will allow for at least partial implementation of the plans. A new element of the immune system has been discovered. Israeli scientists have discovered an unknown element of the system immune, which was hiding in the disposal system all the time and recycling of garbage in the cells. This discovery expands our knowledge of the topic the body's defense mechanisms and gives hope for new ones the antibiotics. It would seem that our immune system is well studied well. But in recent analyses, he surprised scientists. Scholars from Weizmann Institute of Scientific, studying the proteasum a small structure present in every cell whose task is to degrade unnecessary proteins on smaller fragments, peptides, 
have found that some of them are capable of killing the bacteria. The results and description of the research appeared in the journal Nature. Our cells constantly get rid of proteins that are damaged or no longer necessary. This cellular waste disposal system is the proteasome. It plays a major role in protein degradation and recycling for smaller ones pieces peptides. Already in the 1990s, it was shown that peptides can help the system identify the dangers to the immune. In the new research, it turned out that some of the peptides released in the proteasome are capable of killing bacteria. A few years ago, scientists from the Weizmann Institute of Science they have developed a technology that allows you to look at the work of the proteago. Using this tool, they tracked proteasomes in different states diseased, such as lupus and cancer, collecting huge amounts of data about degraded fragments of proteins. Their analysis showed that degradation products proteins can play an additional role. Many of them match the sequence pre-identified antimicrobial peptides, key ingredients of the innate immune system that acts as the first line the body's defense against bacteria, viruses, and parasites. It has been known for years that such peptides can be produced by protein-cutting enzymes called proteases that release them from proteins so they can it becomes active, but new findings have shown that such peptides may be activated by proteasomes. Scientists have determined that the proteasome itself is constantly producing these peptides as part of their routine activity. What's more, their production it increases significantly during bacterial infections. This peptide database opens up new development opportunities personalized methods of treating infections and other diseases, said Professor Ufot Merbleu from the Weizmann Scientific Institute. So far, we knew nothing the relationship between proteasome products and the production of these peptides. We conducted an extensive series of experiments that showed that proteasins they are crucial for this defense system, he added. In these experiments, scientists blocked proteasins in one group of human cells, and they left them intact in the other. When as heated the cells were infected with salmonella, bacteria developed better in a group that lacked active prosthetics. The efficacy of peptides has also been demonstrated in infected mice bacteria that cause pneumonia and sepsis, life-threatening condition caused immune reaction to severe infection. Experiments have shown that treatment peptide produced by proteasome, PDDP proteasome-derived defense peptides, significantly reduced the number of bacteria, reduced tissue damage, it even improved survival rates. Scientists have shown that a single peptide that is naturally produced by the body, it can be effective in case of a life-threatening condition when it is given in large quantities. Results of such the treatments were comparable to those of strong antibiotics. Scientists also noted that the bacterial infection switches prosthetics in, as they called it, the turbo mode. We noticed that the infection causes proteasome to change protein cutting mode, favoring production peptides with antibacterial properties, Merblo explained. Tracking changes in proteasome activity in response to bacterial infection was possible thanks to the technology that we have developed several years ago. The turning point came when we saw that the peptide cutting activity the proteasome changed during the infection. Then we realized that we discovered a previously unknown immune mechanism, Karen said Goldberg, CEO author of the publication. Using an algorithm to analyze all the proteins produced by the human body, scientists have identified peptides with potential antibacterial properties in 92% of human proteins. They are their simulations revealed more than 270,000 previously unknown peptides that could be released by the proteasome, which is a huge, untapped reservoir natural antimicrobials. 
this opens up new opportunities for personalized development methods of treatment of infection. For example, natural peptides can be customized for amplification of immune defense in patients with reduced immunity, as recipients of organ transplants or oncology patients. What's more, because antibiotic resistance continues to pose a major public health challenge, the results of the study not only change our knowledge of cellular immunity, but also opens the way to innovative therapies based on natural mechanisms.